who has stopped into our caucus today that I am very pleased and proud to present to you. Last two years ago, in 2006, we almost defeated Dave Hartley. We came within such a squeaker of seeing a guy that actually has wonderful hair but little else going on for him. <laughs> to bring him back home to Washington to State where he could retire and to send to Washington, D.C. someone who represents not only our values but our vision for the future. And this woman has had my admiration since 2006 because anybody who's going to take on the sheriff, we need to support. <laughs> Darcy Burner. Thank you. Um, so I will try to keep this brief because I know that your day is long. Plus, none of you can actually vote for me, those are the people in the other room. Um, but thank you so much for coming out and participating, because this, this participation is what has changed the direction of our country. So how many of you would like in November for us to substantially change the direction of the country? Now, I'm pretty certain we will be electing a new president in November. If we're not, we have very serious problems. <laughs> And based on the turnout and the level of excitement that I have been seeing, I have every reason to believe we are going to elect a new Democratic president. But whoever that Democratic president is, is going to need a Congress that is going to be working with them to do the massive amounts of work that are going to need to be done to get this country back on the right track. And I would like you to think about helping make sure that we get that kind of Congress come January 2009 people are being sworn in. I didn't come to politics by way of uh, a normal route. I actually spent the first part of my career in technology. I worked at Microsoft. And I was a very happy middle manager at Microsoft in early 2003 when two, two things happened that dramatically changed my perspective on how I should be spending my time. The first thing that happened is that in January of 2003, my son Henry was born. I didn't know that all the first. I said, how do I get this child the kind of life I want him to have? Um, what school district should I live in? Cloth or disposable diapers? Do I have organic food? Um, but in March of 2003, when I was still home on parental leave with my son Henry, my older brother Jason marched from Kuwait into Iraq with the initial invading force. And I realized that there was no set of choices that I could make that was going to be sufficient to give my son the kind of life I wanted him to have if we didn't dramatically change the direction of the country. So I did what any rational parent would do. I quit my job and left my career and ran for Congress. <laughs> and we came incredibly close in 2006. Five voters per precinct close. Incredibly close in 2006. But in early 2007, after I made the decision to try to finish the job that we had started, I kept getting asked this question by voters in the 8th district. It's a perfectly reasonable question. The question was, how are you going to end the war in Iraq? Because the voters I talked to understand that we can't fix our economy when we have $3 trillion that is the size of the hit that the Iraq war is taking on it. That's right! That we can't deal with our environmental issues when we're fighting wars over oil. That we can't deal with a whole lot of the issues that this country is going to struggle with as long as we are mired down in Iraq. And we certainly can't deal with our national security issues when our military forces and our intelligence forces are stretched so thin that they can't protect this country. Fernandez needs 
to sign in so things will go faster. <laughs> so about six months ago, after getting tired of waiting for a plane to come out of Washington, D.C. to describe how we could responsibly end the war in Iraq, I sat down with a retired Major General by the name of Paul Eaton, who was Petraeus' predecessor in Iraq, and asked him to help me. Now, General Eaton, who was in charge of training the Iraqi security forces and military in 2003 and 2004, is an unlikely ally for a Democratic congressional candidate. He's somebody who has voted Republican most of his life, and who voted for George Bush in 2000 and in 2004. But even our senior military people understand that we cannot continue on the course that we are on. The American people have been presented with this false choice by the Republicans. The false choice is we stay the course until we run out of money or soldiers, whichever happens first, or death, destruction, complete chaos, terrorist attacks on our shores, and the end of civilization as we know it. <laughs> Apparently, those are the only two choices. But voters I talk to understand those aren't the only two choices. We can responsibly end this war. And it starts with an understanding that when General Petraeus himself said there is no military solution in Iraq, it means there's no military solution in Iraq. So for the last six months, I have been working with this group of retired military, defense, former Defense Department people, former State Department people, and a number of other candidates across the country to build the responsible plan to end the war in Iraq. We launched it about three weeks ago with 10 candidates in Washington, D.C., and a number of retired candidates in the White House. We have 52 candidates across this country, in red districts, in blue districts, in swing districts, all over the country, who have signed on to the plan, who are saying that they will commit to you, as I will, that we will responsibly end this war in Iraq as our first priority, and that we will fix the institutional failings in this country that got us into this mess to begin with. We will restore checks and balances. We will ensure that the Congress stands up and does their duty. We will ensure that the executive branch is accountable to the courts. And that the people... <laughs> and that the people of this country won't have to fear that the executive branch will declare them enemy combatants and hold them without a writ of habeas corpus in one time. months doing, attempting to end the war in Iraq, which is, you know, a copious free time while I'm running for Congress. 